Before we jump right into using classes in React, I thought it could be helpful to get, admittedly, a very abbreviated review of classes in JavaScript. Now, I simply won't have enough time to really dive deep into prototypes, the prototype chain and inheritance, constructor functions, and the whole nine yards surrounding classes. So if it has been a long time since you've dealt with classes or constructor functions in JavaScript, you may decide that you want to go and review some of those topics. You can click on the logo that you see here, which will take you to a playlist here on Scrimba, which is dedicated to understanding classes. However, the truth is, in order to be productive with classes in React, you really don't necessarily have to have a really deep understanding of classes and constructor functions and the prototype chain and all that. So my lesson will not be touching on those topics, but it will be touching on the parts of classes that you need to know for classes in React or class components to make sense. At its foundation, a class in JavaScript is simply a blueprint for creating multiple objects that all have the same properties and access to the same methods. Now, I felt compelled to put access to the same methods instead of just saying that the objects had the same methods because of the way that the prototype chain works, but don't read too much into it. The point is that every object I create with a class will be able to run any of the methods that I define on the class. So for our purposes, it's important to know that classes are really just a syntactic sugar on top of setting up your constructor functions and a prototype chain manually. Now in React specifically, we are going to see an example of something called class fields, which is a way in a class to initialize every object that gets created from that class with the same value. Now I created a really basic example of this over in the code here. We can see that I created a class called character. We're not yet working in React. This is just vanilla JavaScript. I left a few notes in the comments because it was going to take way too long to actually go through everything here. But you can see here we talk about how if you will always be initializing an instance with a hard-coded value, for example, if I had a character in an RPG game that I wanted to always start out as a live, then you can declare that without any kind of method or constructor or anything. I can simply say inside of my class, alive equals true. This means that any object I create with my class will automatically have a property added to it called alive whose value is set to true. If, however, you want to initialize a class with a dynamic value, then you'll need to use the constructor method inside that class. This makes it so that when I create a new instance of my class, I can provide a value for the property that I want to create. In this example, I'm creating an initial HP. I did give it a default value of 100 just in case somebody tried to initialize a character without this property added. And all it does is add a new property to my object called HP and defaults that value to my initial value. So when I'm creating a new character, I can provide an HP value of 100, or if I don't provide anything in this case, it will default to 100. But this means that I will have a character.hp value here. And by the way, I want you to uncomment this code and play with it, pause the screencast, try changing things, see what happens. That's gonna be the best way to really get a refresher of this. And then lastly, I wanted to remind us that you can extend from one class to another class, which allows your new class, or in other words, kind of like a child class, to access all of the goodness that comes from the parent classes. Or maybe more specifically in terms of React, it allows our extended class or child class to access all of the methods from the parent class that it is extending. So in our parent class, you can see with character that we have a method called update HP. Now, if I scroll down, you can see I created an enemy class and a hero class that are both extending from character and then each have their own specific properties and methods. But because I'm extending character, any object that I create with either the enemy class or the hero class will have access to the update HP method, which is defined in the character class. I promise I'm going to tie this all into React in the next lesson. Hopefully this isn't too overwhelming. However, I did feel compelled to give at least some kind of review to this so that it didn't seem like complete magic when we saw this being used in React. So again, play around with this code. I put a little diagram up here that helps us understand what the relationship between character, hero, and enemy are. The properties in bold help us know where those properties and methods were defined. And then once you've had a chance to play around with this, let's move into the next lesson where we're going to take all of this and see how we can create class-based components in React.